and we're going to title this Destined to Live Free. Destined to Live Free. There are too many of God's people that are saved but still bound. Saved but still have tons of bondages holding them back in life. And it shouldn't be. Because either we're delivered or we're not. All right? So let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. And let me put a little platform here for this week, and then we'll get into it a little deeper as we go. Let's look at verse 11. It says here, in whom, talking about, in, 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 talking about Jesus, in whom also we've obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. We have been predestinated in accordance to him, the Lord, who works out everything according to the counsel of his will. Get it? So there is an inheritance that you and I have received and part of this inheritance involves us walking in our predestinated state and that state is according to God it's through Christ who has worked everything out as he is de- as his purpose design and plan or his desire all right now connect all these dots together because they're going to begin to to give us a picture so so you're predestined you're predestined Every one of you in here are predestined to live a free life. You're supposed to be enjoying a free life in every aspect. And there is nothing that your salvation experience did not touch. All right. And notice it's after his counsel. It's not because this is what we want. No, it's because it's what his desire and his plans were from the beginning. So let's take that and now look at Jeremiah chapter 1. Now I want to read this from my Amplified Bible for the second, for the second time. Notice what it says, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying. Now remember, he works out everything, how? After the counsel of his own will, right? So we're looking at an example of this. So he's speaking to Jeremiah, verse 5. Before, not after, not during. Before I formed you in, we could say your mother's womb, I knew you. So you're not an afterthought when it comes to God. You're not your mama and daddy's mistake. Here it is why you don't abort babies. You know, I was sitting down there this week and I was listening to Friday night. Uh, he kind of changed up the uh, agenda and James Rob, Rob Robertson preached. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's, he's, a, he's a, a world-renowned evangelist. Powerful man. And he began to say that he knew this lady, if I'm correct, I'm trying to remember right. I don't know if she was on drugs or what happened, but I think she got raped and she ended up conce- no, she ended up getting pregnant. And she went to the doctor and she told the story to the doctor and says, I want you to take this baby out of me. I want to abort this baby. I want this baby to this, do, do, do something like this. And for some reason, the doctor told her, no, I won't do it. So she ended up carrying the baby to term. And uh, if I'm correct, the baby ended up getting adopted. And he said a few more things. And then he said this. 
And if that lady, if that, if my my mother had aborted me, I wouldn't be able to stand on the platform today and talk to you. That's all right. It was James Robinson. How many lives has this man touched over the course of his ministry? And he is a product of rape and his mama wanted to abort him. But before that event happened, before any conception took place in the womb, God knew James Robinson. And he also knew you and me. Now, why is that important? Now, notice, before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instruments. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart and consecrated you and appointed you as a prophet unto the nations. So notice, he works out everything out of the counsel of his own will. Before you were born, before you were conceived, before you were even born, he already knew who you were. He already approved what you would be. And he already has appointed you unto something. Now, you got to hear what I'm saying. Especially, I don't know how long we're going to be on this, but I'm talking about, hey, It's time for you and I, as the people of God, to stop being born again, still slaves to bondage. It's ridiculous. It should not be. Either you're free or you're not. You're you're, you're not incarcerated and able to walk down the street. Nor are you able to walk down the street, but you're incarcerated. That they don't go together. If you're incarcerated, where are you behind some bars? You don't have your freedoms anymore. But if I once that debt is paid and I get out, this is why I don't like our, our, our legal system. If I paid the debt to society, if I paid that debt when I get out, I should be free. How you come to? I should be able to vote and everything else. I paid my price. Amen. See, that's the world, but that's not God. Amen. So now, and then he says here. So I have appointed you unto something. I have separated you unto something. And notice I've ordained you, appointed you to be a prophet. Now you may not be appointed to be a prophet, but you're appointed to do something. You have a, a place and a role to play in the body of Christ towards, I mean, uh, unto society. You have a spot. You fit it if it's you. And it is going to be a blessing to society. How many times have we aborted a kid and sent the answer to AIDS back to heaven? Wow. How many babies have we sent back to heaven that could have the answer to Zika virus and but they in heaven now because we sent them back? Well, God, you know, we don't want this one right here, so we sent them back and we sent the answer to cancer, the answer to AIDS, the answer to this back to heaven. How many times have we done it in, the, in, in this country alone? And everybody's fighting for the, I mean, not everybody, but you got thousands and thousands of people fighting for the right to keep doing it. And wondering why your country's steady going down. Hey, you probably because you keep slapping God in the face. But that's another, another sermon. So now, he works out everything according to the counsel of his own will, and he knew and approved and appointed you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. So that tells me who I am does not depend on what I think or how I feel or what you have to say. So we can't blame, well, the reason that I ain't and the reason that it didn't is because they hold me back. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 just one second. Who knew you? See, I don't need to step on you to get ahead. Why? Because I know somebody who knew me before there was ever a you. If I can get in contact and line my life up with him who works out everything according to the ca- of his own counsel, then I can get to where I need to be. Why? He's already got it worked out. I just need to be able to figure out what, what is the plan and how to follow it. Now, we're going to get there. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but we're going to get to that. Now, let's take that and let's go over to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Now, I'm building on something here. Jeremiah 29. 
Now, I, I know I'm right because I'm reading from the Word. There is no God-given right, reason rather, there's no God-given reason why any of us should not be experiencing over the top abundant freedom in every area of our life. And if we're not, it's because we have yet to yield to God's purpose and plan in whatever area that you're still bound in. Now notice what it says here in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. So if God knows what's going on, then this would be true. For I know the thoughts and the plans or the thoughts King James says, the thoughts that I think towards you. The I mean, the Amplified Bible says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. So he has thoughts and plans about you. He knew which generation you would be born in. That's why you're alive in this one. Well, I wish I had been born back there when the disciples was walking. No, you don't, because you, you wouldn't have been able to handle it. I am glad I wasn't born in 1800. <laughs> I am glad that I didn't have to experience what, what, what some people sitting in this room experienced in the 40s and 50s. I, I mean, and I'm not being taking anything away from it, but I am so glad that I can read about Jim Crow and I didn't have to be there. I wasn't fit. I couldn't. I, I wasn't designed for that. I would have been born. The people that were born in that generation were anointed to handle that. You're living in this generation because you are equipped. God has equipped you to handle the generation you live in. Now, it's horrible out there, but you have something in you that can handle it. Amen. You are equipped to be here now. Amen. And the world needs you here now. And God says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards you. <laughs> He didn't say that I think towards us or towards a church or towards a group of people. He individualized it. You. God knows you distinctly apart from everybody else. That is just how well you are known of God and that is just how well you fit into God's plan. Then he says here, the thoughts and plans are for your welfare your peace and not for evil. So if there's any evil and bondage in your life, it's not a part of God's plan. He just said that here. Well, the Lord is trying to teach me something. What is he trying to do? When did God ever need sickness to teach somebody something? That's just like for you to say that God is trying to put this on you to teach you something. It's the equivalent of you saying that uh, I'm going to teach Layla something. Girl, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you to listen to everything I got to say and, I, I, and, and then I'll break your leg. That's stupid. That's called what? Child abuse. We put people in prison for that, don't we? Or I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you a lesson about playing in the street. And you push me out in front of a car to get hit. <laughs> said, but we laugh, but that, isn't that what you're saying when God put this evil on me to teach me something? Well, what kind of father is he then? That don't sound like a good parent to me. No, that did not come from God. He just said, my plans are for your welfare, for your peace, and they are not for evil. They're to give you hope in your final outcome, or they're to give you a good expectation in, in hopes of where I've called you or destined you unto. That's what God has said. Now, there's a the platform that I, I, I want to put this down because I'm going to build on this. Bondage was not a part of God's plan for mankind. Period. I don't care what kind of bondage it was. 
you have to trace it all the way back to the beginning. If you go back to Genesis and you look at what God did for mankind, you saw good warfare, peace. You didn't see any bondage. There was no bondage in the Garden of Eden. He said everything was what? Good and very good. The weather was perfect. Plenty of food. Plenty of peace and joy. God could come down and walk and talk with him in the coolest of the day. God gave him a, a, some clothes to wear. God clothed them. And I ain't talking about that suit, that, that animal skin he put on them after they fell. They had clothes before that. That's why when they lost their clothes, they realized they was naked. Why did they realize they was naked at first? Because they had on some clothes. You know, I heard somebody say this once before, and it's absolutely true. He God said everything that God created, they, they, that he created them with their natural garments on. Look at the cat, fur. Fish, scales. Right? Birds, feathers. Why do we got to put on artificial clothes? Because we lost our clothing, folks. What was Adam and Eve clothed in at first? Glory. The glory. They shined. They didn't see each other. They, that was their natural suit. But they lost it. But I, I don't have time for that right now. Go into that. So you didn't see any evil in the Garden of Eden until, until Eve and Adam, because I know most people preach that Eve jacked it up. No, the Bible said Adam was standing right there listening. Read it. He was right there listening. So both of them <laughs> listened to the lies of Satan and received another destiny. Now God had already had one and he was given to him. What was their original destiny? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and live like kings here, have dominion over it. That was their original destiny. But when they listened to the devil and they said, because remember, and their eyes were what? Open. Open to what? A new destiny, a new way of living. They exchanged it. The new destiny now came with evil. First thing, they lost their clothes. Second, well, first thing, they died spiritually. They were disconnected from God. Second, they lost their clothes. Third, they got kicked out of their house. They had to leave the garden. And, but every provision that they ever needed was where? Still in the house. Now they had to go out here and they had to toil by the sweat of their brow. They had to toil and labor and work hard for everything that they were going to get. They were in bondage. Manifestation, first manifestation, well, one of the first manifestations outside of them personally was now their kids are killing each other. And it just keeps going on and on and on. So God's original intent was for us to enjoy life and have everything we needed provided for us by him. Now, oh, man. St. John chapter 10. Why did God need to send Jesus. Why did God decide to get up off of his throne, wrap himself up in human flesh and come here? He had to restore. He didn't send an angel to restore it. He didn't destroy mankind and start all over. He came himself. Why? Because how valuable we are to him. That's how valuable you are to God. You are worth way. You know, we fight wars over gold, diamonds, and oil. God fights wars over you. Forget the oil, the gold. You know, the gold is like asphalt to him. It's, it's just we walk on it. In heaven. God fights for people. People fight for things. Now notice what Jesus said here. 
Verse 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy in that order. Because in order for him to, to put evil into your life, he has to first steal God's word. Isn't that what he had to do that to Eve and Adam? God already gave him the word, but Satan had to do what? Steal that and exchange it for a new one. Surely God wouldn't do that. He knows that the day that you eat this, you, he knows that you guys will be just like him, knowing the good difference between good and evil. But they already knew good. See, Satan got them thinking that God was holding back on them. So he stole God's word. So when the, once the word is stolen, then he can kill. He can kill the hope, kill the dream, kill the faith, kill the destiny. And that's what we saw happen. Steal, kill. And once that happens, it's destroyed. He's totally destroyed your purpose of why you're here. But notice Jesus says, I have come. Now, Satan had his reason why he came, but Jesus says, I have come that you may have more evil. Is that what he said? No. I have come that you may be delivered from some of your bondages. I may come, I have come that you may, you know, just make it to heaven. No, no, no. No. He says, I have come that you might have what? Life and have it more abundantly till the full and till it overflows from the Amplified Bible. Thank you, Layla. Help for helping me preach. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to restore you and I back are to give us the opportunity to re be restored back to God's original plan for our lives. And when you plug into him, your spirit is reborn and everything that he says I knew before I formed you in your mother's womb is restored back in that new spirit. God doesn't have to come up with a new plan. Why? He already knew what he thought about you before you got here. Well, what happened? Well, let's look at what happened. Then chapter 5, of 50, verse 551 comes into play. From the Amplified Bible says, Behold, I was brought forth in a state of iniquity, in my mother, uh, 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 iniquity. My mother was sinful, who conceived me, and I too am sinful. So what happened? You hit, you hit this, this world. And because of what Adam did, a sin nature was lodged into everybody born from the seed of a man. It's lodged in there. You can't do anything about it. It's there. So you're born with a sin nature. And then everything around you started training you to be sinful. Everything in this world started plugging into that sin nature to train you to be sinful. Why? Satan's idea about this is to so beat you down, so destroy you, that if you do get a chance to hear the good news, you won't accept it because you just feel so beat down. Just to, and hopefully kill you before you even get a chance to hear it. That was the goal. Well, how how does how, how that happen? Okay, I mean, you know, I ain't trying to be rude here, but just listen to this. Hello? Is your mother home? Tell him I'm not here. Tell him I'm not here. Uh, no, she's not here. That's the key. She's not here. What did we just do? We're training them. Training them to lie. Uh, who ate the last cookie? It wasn't me. Boy, I see the crumbs on you. Why you eat that? Well, hold on, whoa, 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 wait just one second. Where did they learn how to say it wasn't me? Tell them I'm not here. So you getting on them for something that you trained them to do. Get it? 
See, see, the, everything we're, tra we're training, this is why God needs godly parents to start pumping the word of God into your children from while they're in your stomach. You need to be talking to them, singing to them. You need to be teaching the word of God. Why? Because you're building a capacity to hear God so that they can get in on this early and not go through the beat down of life. And finally, God, Lord, thank you. Oh, Jesus, I just finally made it. <laughs> All right. So Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. What life? The life that he works out according to the counsel of his own will before you were formed in your mother's womb. There was a life pre-designed for you. And Jesus says, I have come that you may have that life and that you may have that one more abundantly. And that's why he's here. So he's opened up the way for us to get back in line with the original plan. And there is no bondage in it. There is no evil in it. Now, there is a reason why Christian people, I'm talking about, let me say this way, let's, let's say Christian people because that don't mean much anymore. There's a reason why born again, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, tongue talking Christians still live facts of their life in bondage. Even though they're supposed to be free. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not an automatic. And some people preach this fantasy fairy tale, fairy tale Christianity, and it's, it's wrong. No, 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 no. Yeah, you establish, you save, but you can live like hell every day of your life down on this earth and die prematurely and do nothing God said you were supposed to do, and you'll go on and go to heaven, but you'll go heaven... You'll go to heaven and you will have not accomplished your goal. You'll go to heaven and find out... We, a lot of God's people get to heaven and be like, you mean to tell me I could have had all this down there? And God said, yeah, it was yours. Did I tell you I worked out everything according to the counsel of your own will? I, I, if, if God called you to build houses for people, then the resources to build houses for people is laid up for you to do that. If God called you To be, you know, there's a such thing in the word of God called a, a, a giver. There's a ministry of, of people, people that are just anointed to give. Well, if that was what God put you here is to be a financer in the kingdom of God, he's laid up tr tr tons of money for you. Why? It's a part of what you will need to fulfill your role. Here, let me go a little step further. I, I, mean, I promise I'm going to stop. Step further. Now I'm going to probably shock you with this, but I believe with all of my heart. So you're going through earth. Well, let me explain it this way and you'll get it. I heard this guy was talking to uh, the, uh, one of the chief's top CEOs for, it was, it was one of the, one of the car, major car uh, industry, Ford or Christ or somebody, one of them. And they took him to the factory. And he was seeing this car. I think it was, I think when I heard this was like the 19, I mean, uh, uh, 2014. And he was showing him the 2015s that were just starting to come offline. And they were making these 2015 cars. And he was like, man, man. He was watching how they do it. And he said, but then he took him to another, uh, they drove across the thing to another building, huge building. And it was just shelves and shelves and shelves of stuff, parts in there. And he said, well, what is all this? He says, well, the moment we started production of 2015 cars, we also had to start production on parts. Because as these cars are sold and driven, things break down, and we, you know, we don't wait till we get an order before we make the part. No, the part's already made, so if you call with the order, you get it. Now, so God has you down here through life. And Satan don't beat you up, ran you down, had you drinking and smoking and gambling and fighting and cussing and kicking and robbing and doing all kind of dumb stuff. 
and now you got saved, but you um, blew out your knee doing it. Now you have crippled. You drunk so much, your liver's half ate up. Smoke so many cigarettes, you only got one little tiny pink spot left on your lung. And you're barely making it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did Jesus say? I have come that you might have life or be restored back to what you were called to do. And you can't do it with a busted knee. You can't do it getting ready to die from sclerosis of the liver. And you can't get do it with cancer of the lungs. So what does he expect us to do? There's scripture that we can use to call heaven and get a new part. That's all right. If Ford can create an alternator for their car, surely God can create a new knee, Amen. a new lung. Amen. You have parts. You're going to get to heaven and find out you could have had. What in the world? It's in the word of God. He says, I have given you. Oh, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Oh my. I have given you all things things that pertain to life when the knee pertains to life when the lung pertain to life when the liver pertain to life with money houses clothes all things that pertains to life to own life on this hand and godliness so it doesn't matter which which uh, d- dominion or dimension I'm working in I've been given all things so if I need it I have it available to me that's what Jesus came to do but we read that and be like, well, I see that. And then because our minds are limited, we don't think this way. Because because of what keeps God's people in bondage. Our minds need to be renewed. And I'm going to have to stop right there. We've been too long. We, 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 we'll pick it up there on Sunday. I think that's a good introduction to get us started. Folks. <laughs> we, as God's people, are struggling to live life Struggling to enjoy life when Jesus already said, that's what I came for and that's what I died for. I've already provided it for you. How hard would it be? You know, I was down there in the media. I, I promise, this is my last closing. <laughs> she said, take your time. This is my last closing. So Creflo did this example down at the conference. He called his two kids up. He actually called three people up. And he put out a hundred dollar bill. He put out a hundred, uh, uh, a lot of hundred dollar bills. So he took one hundred dollar bill and he was standing there and he was saying, he told one kid to stand right here, and told the other kid to stand over on on this side of the platform. And then he had a kid that was standing in the middle. So he started over here. Took out a hundred dollar bill. He says, "Now, I have a hundred dollar bill in my hand. It's already been manufactured. It's spendable." You don't have to recreate it. It's not counterfeit. It's just, it's, it's here. It's just, it's just here. It's just here. And anyone that will take it and, and use it, it'll do whatever you need to do. Finally, the boy caught on and, and, and took it. So he walks all the way over to this boy and put out another one says, now here's a $100 bill. It starts going through the same thing. And it took this boy a few, few minutes, but he took it. Now, here's my question. If I just got through looking at what happened here right. and listening to what happened here, by the time he got to me, it should have been automatic. I had this. But it took a minute. So then he went to the kid in the middle. Same thing. Still hesitant. Why were they hesitant? It's because of how we've been trained in society. We don't understand the concept of something being provided. All we understand is work for. That's all we understand. 
And we think if somebody's giving us something, there's got to be some gimmick to it. Got to be something attached to it. So we, we hesitate. Or we, don't, or, or we don't believe it's true. So by time, this is why God needs you and I to be who he's called for us to be. Because we're the kids that standing here hearing this. Well, I'll take that back. There have been people that have gone before us that stood and heard it for the first time, were hesitant. But they took it. We are the kids now that's way over here in the end church. When we hear this stuff now, there have been too many examples, too many testimonies, too much of everything going on. Till when we get down here and we hear this, we're like, well, glory to God, take it real fast. It will not be something that we still got to struggle to do. Amen. But the reason that God's people are still in bondage is because <coughs> although we're safe, we're still functioning on the world's CD. We're still functioning on the world's program. Right, and the world's program does not match the kingdom. And in order for you to get quicker in your response to God, you got to reprogram. You got to take out the world's program and put in kingdom. So that when Jesus says, I have come, that's me. Instead of saying, well, Lord, if, if, if it be your will, I ain't praying if it be your will. I already know it's worked out. You've already worked out according to your will. So if you told me if I could find the problems in the Bible, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let me just stop. All right. We will stop there. And I promise my last ending. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. It's it, it's it's right. And we receive it and we have it now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right.